Thank you to everybody who has come, and thank you for our hosts here, and thank you to Chang'an Sunim for coming all the way to Brussels to give us a uh, very nice Dharma talk and also lead us in some practice. We thank you for that. Uh, my experience with Zen and meditation has been something that I think has I've kind of seen or have come in and out of my life for a long time, even since I was a kid. But only when I really met Chong An Sunim did I really start to practice more and every day. And I will say that for me, Zen and meditation has really improved my life. And I won't say that it will help you to, I don't know, achieve any kind of miracles, but I will say that, or like eliminate your frustrations or your fears or your angers, because for me at least this is not what it has done, but what I can say is that when I do get angry or when I do get frustrated, the amount of time that I'm angry or frustrated or stressed is very little now. It comes and I can very easily acknowledge it and just let it go and pass it on. And I think for me as a person, because I'm someone who's very passionate and emotional, this is something that has really helped me in my life because otherwise, when I was younger, I would spend weeks angry over one small thing or I would get stressed very quickly, I don't know, at work, and then I would just hold it. It would feed into everything else, into my relationships, into my other work, into my sports, everything. And since I have started to practice meditation and Zen practice, for me it has been very kind of liberating in the sense that I feel like for the first time, and of course, I mean, I'm still a novice and I'm still learning and I hope to, to go much further, but that I have more control over my own mind. As before, I was really just the subject of my mind and everything kind of, I was at the whim of what was happening. I didn't get to choose. And now, at least sometimes, I get to choose. And I think that's a very nice thing to be able to have that choice. For me, in a way, Zen practice is also a bit, I guess, like brushing your teeth. Because in many ways, every day I practice. And some days you feel something, and some days you don't feel anything at all. But just like brushing your teeth, you don't really notice the effects that are happening on your teeth at any given day because, I don't know, you're brushing your teeth. But you know, these effects and what you're doing is allowing you to enjoy so much more of your life because you can eat the foods that you want to eat, you can speak properly to the people who you want to speak to. And you know, by having your teeth, you can really you know, enjoy your life. In the same way, my Zen practice is like this. I mean, when I meditate every day or I do my bows, maybe during that time, I don't feel maybe very much like it's really solving all my problems or something like that. But what I do notice is later on, I realize, okay, oh my God, now I can really, you know, when I get angry or I come into a situation at work that's really frustrating, I can handle these a lot more. And then when I go home from work or I, you know, have a, a problem with a friend or a family member, I don't just carry all of that into the rest of my life and let it corrupt everything else. Because, you know, you may have a bad day at work, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't enjoy your meal with your friends after work. Or it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to go take a walk and enjoy the trees or, you know, speak to your friends on the phone. I mean, you have to acknowledge these things, but at the same time, you know, allow them to, to kind of pass over you a little bit and to kind of move on in some ways. And for me, my practice has really helped me with this a lot. And I think that, especially for my relationships and also for my work, that this practice has, has helped me to really also enjoy the work that I do. Because sometimes things can become mundane, both in your relationships, but also at work. And oftentimes, I think today, people's attitude is just to like find something new or to leave the person and go somewhere else, or to just look for a new experience. And I think that through this and through my practice, I've learned to be able to appreciate many things on a much deeper level and, and to continually appreciate even the same thing, even to you know, have the same conversation or do the same task or to, I don't know, eat the same food on a consistent basis. You can still gain and continue to gain from even the smallest thing 
every single day you can get something new out of it. And I think that this is something that, that my practice has really helped me to achieve. And I think that it's something that's really important. I think for a lot of people, it's very difficult to sit for 30 minutes. And even though I've been practicing or an hour for many years now, I, there's still some days when I sit for 30 minutes and it's like the most excruciating thing in the world for me to do. But I also know that like, I can spend easily two hours in front of my computer or on my phone or something like that and time just passes like this and it's gone. And when you sit even for 30 minutes, excruciating as it may feel, you know, everything slows down a lot and you start to really realize, oh my God, I have a lot of time. You know, when I sit, for example, 30 minutes at night after work or something, maybe during the day I'm going, oh my God, I have no time to do this, I have no time to do this, everyone wants this done, this done, this done. And then I go home and then I sit there for 30 minutes or maybe an hour, it depends on the day. Sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm going, oh my God, this is so painful, how can this be taking so long? How can this be lasting for so long? And then I think to myself, oh my God, 30 minutes just felt like an eternity. Like I could have accomplished so much in those 30 minutes. Where was all that when I was at work, when I was so stressed about everything and I felt like I had zero time? Where was that? And I think that taking those moments, I don't know, it doesn't even have to be every day, but you know, on a consistent basis, it can really put things into perspective for you and it can really help you and allow you to realize in your everyday life that in fact, you do have time for things, whether it's, I don't know, calling a friend or talking to a friend or being with the person who you love or, or just going and taking a walk. I really genuinely believe that, you know, you do have the time and we live in a reality where everything is very, very fast paced. I think that this is a problem because people don't realize that, in fact, time is really just part of your mind. It's totally up to you to decide how time passes. And it's up to you to, to kind of form your own time, period, and, and make it fast or make it slow. Choose if you want to have it go by quickly or choose if you want it to slow it down. I mean, sometimes when I'm also, I don't know, at work or something, I think like, okay, I have no time for this. And then I think, actually, I have like 24 hours. I could not do this task for 24 hours, for example, for one day. So I do actually have time. If I spend it correctly, I can have the amount of time that I would like to have. I really think it's something that's missing now in this world and even living in a city. I mean, we don't live in, in the countryside, so we don't get to necessarily appreciate the forest or the nature or things like this. But in fact, we have many green spaces in Brussels, and I think we're, we're lucky for that. And oftentimes we're just walking past them. We're just walking past other people. We're walking past the trees. We're walking past the ants. We're walking past everything and our heads are facing down and we're just going and we're not seeing any of the world around us. And in fact, for me, at least in my practice, the more that I, that I practice and that I meditate, the more that I can be conscious of all of these beautiful things. I can be conscious when I'm sitting on the bus or going to work or I'm walking to work of the changing colors of the trees. I can be conscious of, you know, the conversations or the laughter of the little kids on the bus sitting behind me and the jokes that they're making. I'm not just thinking about, oh my God, I have to do this task, I have to do this task, I have to do this task. I'm, I'm really able to be present in the current situation that I'm in and be grateful for it and also to absorb it. And I think for me, being able to absorb this kind of energy and or call it whatever you want, but just this experience throughout the day is something that can become very revitalizing because once you learn to actually see the world around you, you know, it gives you a lot. It can give you a lot of happiness. It can give you a lot of support. I mean, even the trees or whatever can give you a lot of support. You can look at them and they can teach you something beautiful and you don't always have to run to Wikipedia or something like that. You can just go to the park and learn something from the grass and learn something from the trees. And for me, this kind of appreciation of life is something that has fulfilled me a lot more. I mean, living in New York for a long time is something that there's everything going on and you lose this. And even living in a city in general, it's very fast paced and you lose this. And it's very important, I think, to be able to slow your life down a little bit, to enjoy it. And most of all, to enjoy the people who you're around and the things that you're doing. And for me, this is what my practice has mostly helped me to do.